Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my 2020 deck collection and declutter series. So in this series, what I'm trying to do is share with you guys all of my decks grouped into categories. Um, the whole idea of grouping them into the categories um, actually is totally the original creation of Don Michelle at Boho Tarot, who I think was the first person I ever saw doing that. Um, so thank you to Don Michelle for the idea. It really helped make my filming this deck collection series a lot more manageable. This, today's category is stories and myths. So this is any of the decks in my collection that I associate with a story, fairy tales, mythology, etc. Um, there is one deck that I put in a previous category and that is my um, Legend the Arthurian Tarot. I don't remember what category I put that in, but I've already talked about it, <laughs> and I can't remember off the top of my head, but that one probably should have been in this one, but I mean, in the process of categorizing my decks, I'm sure I've miscategorized some or wished I'd put them in different ones, blah, blah, blah. But you guys, I have so many decks in this particular set, so I'm just going to jump in because I have a lot. Um, part of this, though, is not only sharing my decks, but also deciding if there's any in my collection that can be passed along. So with that in mind, let's jump in. So the first one I want to talk to, I didn't start easy here, is the Glastonbury Tarot. This is an out of print deck that was created based on the landscape of Glastonbury and the mythology of Glastonbury. There is a little bit of a struggle I have with this deck and part of that is that I've noticed that the Minor Arcana feels kind of modern, like sometimes not, this dress is very kind of medieval. But then sometimes, yes, like with this character who's like wearing modern clothing. And I found that to actually be a bit of a dissonant experience when I was working with the deck. Through the majors, you have um, Arthurian legend um, references. But then in the minors, it kind of goes a little all over the place. Let me just bring them up. So as much as I was really excited to get a hold of this deck, I'm not actually sure it's one that I intend to keep in my collection. And I say that with like kind of a little bit of a heartbreak because like look at this the barge of Avalon I love this um, what I've recognized however is that I think I had sort of built this deck up in my mind and I ultimately think after trying to work with it a bit that it's just I just don't feel like it it, it has to offer me what I was hoping it had to offer me I don't know if that makes any sense like this is one that kind of throws me the ace of chalices um, so I think I actually may put this up for trade at some point. We'll see. I'm going to put it in the pile to consider trading. The backs are absolutely beautiful with the Glastonbury Tour here. But I don't know. I just, there's like this, again, this dissonance between modern. Here's a good example. Here we have the Knight of Swords, who looks like a literal knight. And then we have the Ten of Staffs, and it's a modern. And I just, I'm good with modern decks and I'm good with medieval decks. It's the weird mix here that I'm struggling with. So I'm going to set this aside to consider possibly for rehoming. Um, taking a jump, well actually I guess this kind of is in the same category. So let's go this direction. So I don't know if this is the bag this deck is going to stay in, but this is my Mists of Avalon Oracle by Rose and Sura. And this deck I love. So it's a mass market oracle deck, um, also based on the Arthurian mythos. I love the art style in this deck. I love the backings. Um, I really need to edge this one. This was an absolute joy to work with and it felt very harmonious. Its theme ran strong through the entire deck. Um, I really liked this one. Again, I wish I had put Legend of the Arthurian Tarot into this category, but just as a refresher, I am keeping that deck. It was one I had in my trade pile for a while, but I've decided I really want to spend some time studying it, and I think um, it would pair really well with this deck, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm, oh, look at the other world card. I know it's a unicorn, I get all excited, but there's Glastonbury Tour. Um, so there is all of the things I think I wanted from the Glastonbury Tarot. I feel like I've got in this um, Mists of Avalon Oracle, oddly. So this one is one that I'm definitely keeping and I enjoy, but it is new to my collection. So I don't have a ton to say about it just yet, but I have talked about it in a weekly deck review. If you're interested in some more of my thoughts about it, you can definitely search that up on my channel. And I will try to have links to everything down below, but this one's a keep for sure. So I'm going to put it in the keep pile. Okay, next up, sort of, sort of tangentially related is my mists or excuse me my Avalonian Oracle. 
Now this deck is specifically connected to my time with the Sisterhood of Avalon. This deck is a collaboration between Gina Talindru, who is the founder and um, uh, essentially the High Priestess title. I'm literally blanking on the title now, which is shameful, I'm sure. But um, between her and uh, I believe Emily Brunner is the artist's name, but I don't have it in front of me. And this is basically an encapsulation of the work that I did in the Sisterhood of Avalon. To be honest, I really haven't worked with this deck at all, but I feel like it's a really wonderful sort of catalog, almost like a deck, a deck form, a book of shadows in deck form of a lot of the work that I did in the Sisterhood of Avalon. So a lot of these cards, they just have a lot more personal meaning to me and they definitely harken back to that work and I feel like if I wanted to return to that work in my spiritual practice I could use this deck to help me do that so while I'm not actively working with it and I did edge it in this pretty blue while I'm not actively working with this deck I'm also not in a position where I am prepared to let it go I will say as far as like recommending it or not goes I think this deck would be something I wouldn't resonate with without the context of my work with the Sisterhood of Avalon. Um, I, it has been requested, I can't remember where I saw it, but I did see a request to talk more about my experiences with this group, and I may do that at some point. I just haven't really felt felt right doing that yet. So if that changes, I will definitely make a video about that. Um, but I did a lot of healing work there and then, and um, yeah, so this deck is definitely staying with me. Okay. Next up, let's take, let's talk about fairy tales because I have a few decks that sort of fall into the fairy tale category. So the first of these is a deck that I traded or sold years ago. I actually had this deck in the 90s, traded it at, or sold it, and then got on a bit of a bug up my butt and decided to reacquire it. Um, and I actually purchased a copy of the original 90s printing from somebody on a used bookstore, but the copy came in with a ton of water damage. And so a lot of these cards are actually like really damaged. It doesn't show up on camera, but they're like super wrinkly. Um, some of them are like straight up torn. I don't know if it's gonna show up. Anyway, sorry, let me back up. This is the Inner Child cards um, by, I think these are actually in order. I think I was gonna do a walkthrough of these. Um, these are by Isha Lerner, and um, they are, one of the things I like about these as an Inner Child deck is they are massive. They are massive. So for reference here, just because it's handy, here's the Glastonbury Tarot. I mean, like, they're huge cards. And that's what I remembered about them from the 90s, is I feel like they made me feel small holding them, like they feel oversized. And there's something about that in Inner Child work that I think is really cool. Um, but these are based on fairy tales through the major arcana and they literally say the name of the fairy tale on them. So Snow White for um, the Hermit, Alice in Wonderland for the Wheel of Fortune, the Midas Touch, Jack and the Beanstalk for the Hanged Man, Sleeping Beauty for Death. Um, it just, it makes a lot of sense through the major arcana, just really well known fairy tales. The Yellow Brick Road for uh, the Sun. Three Little Pigs for Judgment, and The Earth Child isn't a specific fairy tale, I don't believe, um, for the world. And then through the minors, you just get very whimsical scenes, um, but some of the minors I think are a little harder to read with just out the gate. Like this is the Seven of Wands, and it doesn't visually to me like represent like say the Rider Waite Smith meaning, so these do kind of go their own way. Um, I've thought about this is available in a current printing. I just heard the cardstock was worse, but to be honest, this cardstock isn't awesome. Yeah, here's a card that's like really damaged, so you can probably see just how much it got like wrecked trying to separate the cards. Um, they were literally like, I had to peel them apart. They were so stuck together. Um, anyway, I'm keeping this one for now. Uh, there is, like I said, a current printing, so I could get a brand new crisp copy of this deck, and I may at some point but given what I learned about this, about the fact that I wanted this deck back, I don't want to rehome it yet again. So I'm going to hold on to this copy for now. Um, it is usable as it is. Like you can kind of see some of like the mildewy sort of spot. Anyway, okay. Inner Child cards, keeping. Um, they are really unique. And there is, I believe, even a workbook to do Inner Child work, Inner Child healing work with these cards. So it may be worth a further look. But uh, if that's something you're interested in doing in your practice. But yeah, these are definitely staying in my collection for now. Next up in the fairy tale realm, I have two decks that have me feeling a little bit torn. Both are kind of out of print. So I'll talk about the first one. This is the Baba Studios fairy tale um, tarot. This deck came in a tuck box, which I have stored away for now. Um, I have done a bunch of readings with this deck. 
It does have, this was, this was my second Baba Studio deck, or maybe my first. Um, this cardstock doesn't feel quite the same as later decks. Um, it feels more papery in a way. Um, it's held up beautifully though, just like their other card, other decks. The Fairy Tale Tarot features every single card is linked with a full length, like it was, sorry, full length, with a fairy tale from a different culture. Um, some local, like local, some more ones that I was familiar with, and some from totally different areas of the world. And that's really, really cool about this deck. The full length guidebook that comes with it is very well done and has a retelling of every single story. I spent a great deal of time sort of bonding and getting to know this deck, but at the end of the day, there was something about it that I just, I never found, found it particularly visually exciting. It, there was some, I don't know, I did, it's not that I haven't enjoyed my time with it, but other than the fact that it's a rare and out of print deck, I've really questioned whether or not I'm meant to keep it. So I'm going to be putting this, I think, aside and considering whether or not it's meant to stay in my collection. Um, I just don't get excited about it the way that I think I wanted to, despite its theme, which is definitely up my alley. So that is the Fairy Tale Tarot by Baba Studio. Again, very well done. The tales, the stories, it's got a really comprehensive list of stories. It's really good. So the next deck, also kind of a tricky one as far as being in print goes, is the Fairy Tale Tarot by Lisa Hunt. Now, this deck is out of print and very hard to find. However, through a series of circumstances, I managed to be able to trade with a friend for the English guidebook. So this was just the English full-length guidebook, no cards, um, and I was able to purchase the Spanish version of the cards, which I believe you can still get the Spanish version of the cards. They do come in a box set with the guidebook, so the titles are in Spanish. Um, I really prefer these cards artwork-wise, as well as the selection of stories in this particular set, over the Baba Studios deck. The only challenge I really have is that I don't know, um, my Spanish is just rusty enough <laughs> that it can be a little tricky, more in the majors than in the minors. Um, like I can tell El, Val El Valor, 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 I don't know, is strength. Um, and thankfully there's numbers through the majors and my, it's actually not so bad. I feel like when I was working with this I managed it okay. Part of me is tempted to actually just trim the titles right off the cards and instead just use a, a, a silver sharpie to mark what card it is. That's extremely tempting to do except for it would really mess up the backs. So, I mean, I feel like I probably won't bother doing that. This deck I definitely want to hold on to. I really, this guidebook is so well done and it has all the stories. It tells you what culture the stories are from. There's keywords. There's also a really fantastic spread in this book. So this one's definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. This is a keep. I'm actually in the process. I've, I've commissioned my wife when she has some time to help me make a uh, two pocket bags for this deck specifically so that it has a, um, a special home because I don't think I'll ever use this deck without its guidebook. I mean, we'll see, but I want to be able to keep them together. So these are set aside waiting for their special bag, but that's a keep for sure. Um, that may be it for fairy tales. I think that might be it for fairy tale. Oh, no, let's go this direction. So next up, this is the recently released Forest of Enchantment Tarot by Llewellyn. <laughs> this is by, um, Lunea Weatherstone and the guidebook by I am spacing I'm so sorry but this is like the fairy tale tarot of my dreams um, the difference to of this deck compared to my other fairy tale tarot is that it's not overly specific about what stories you're seeing I mean you will recognize some characters and some stories through this deck but it feels more sort of universally applicable I only have beef with like one card in this deck and it's just a random, I think it's the King of Cups, yeah there we go. It's the, the Keeper of Visions who's the King of Cups in this deck because it's a salmon. It does make sense when you look at the guidebook, it does make sense, but it's just a little incongruent with the rest of the deck. But this is so beautiful, it's a wonderful deck for pathworking, it's very dreamy. Um, 
It's got all those beautiful fairy tale vibes. I love this Two of Cups. Um, it's just really, really wonderful. Beautifully produced. It is on that like sort of thinner, kind of glossy, semi-gloss um, Llewellyn cardstock, but I find it to be pretty nice. I love the backings, and I still need to, to edge this deck. This is definitely my favorite um, of my fairy tale decks, and it's so funny because this one is the easiest to get a hold of right now. Um, I, I think I actually prefer this one even over my um, Lisa Hunt deck. Now, if I had the Lisa Hunt, I don't know why I can't adjust very well to these um, Spanish titles. I'm sure I'll get over it. But, man, the artwork in both of them is so beautiful. But these are both, these are both really, really lovely. Okay, that's definitely a keep. I can stop talking about it now. Let's take a sidestep to other types of myths and stories for a moment. So... Here's another out of print deck. I heard a rumor that sometime in 2019 this deck was coming back into print, but I haven't actually seen any evidence of that yet. I have a very well-worn, I mean like very well-worn copy of the original 1980s printing or 1990s printing of the um, Mythic Tarot. And I'm pretty conflicted about this deck if I'm being completely honest. I really have wanted to possibly trim this deck to see if freeing it from its borders would change my relationship with it. I have had this on my deck decks to study list for a very long time and you know I still haven't done it. Um, I feel like I want to do that before I pass this on but I feel like there's a very good chance I may pass this on because as much as I enjoy Greek myth um, I just these cards are not pleasant to handle they're very thin cardstock like Again, this is like a pretty well-used, well-loved copy from the 80s or the 90s, but I don't like the new, and it shuffles fine, I don't like the new Mythic Tarot really at all. So um, that's tricky for me. But that is my deck based on Greek myths. I also did get a hold of a copy of the original guidebook as well, so I have both, um, and that works really well. So I'm going to put this in the... You know what? I am going to put this in the maybe pile because I don't actually know if I'm ever going to put the effort in. So we'll see how that goes. Along the same lines of myth, I also have the 78 Tarot Mythical, and I love this deck. Um, and it's funny because I'm usually not very big on collaborative decks, but honestly, the team at 78 Tarot does such an amazing job. The quality of this deck is outstanding. Like, hello to the flashy gilding, all the gold. Um, and I just really love the selection of artwork in this deck, and there's all kinds of different mythological um, references on every single card, and it's just a fun, like, discovery to learn as you work with this deck, just to pull individual cards and, like, learn about those stories, learn about those myths. I just really, really enjoy it. This, this deck makes me pretty happy. I find that it reads really, really well and is wonderful for single card draws, but I think it also works well for regular spreads as well. There's a lot to jump off of intuitively. Oops. Um, and it's also pretty neat just to have a deck, I love this card so much, to have a deck that um, just has 78 individual pieces of art, and this actually has I think like 80 because there's a couple of extra cards. Um, but I absolutely love this deck. It's a treasure. I don't think I need or want any other of these um, in my collection at this point, but this one is the one that definitely spoke to me. And the guidebook is so well done. And yeah, I love this deck. So this is a keeper. Love the bag it's in too. That's the 78 Tarot Mythical. Oh boy, okay, let's jump. Okay, I guess we'll go here. So this deck is one that I was really excited to get but haven't worked with as much as I thought I would and this is the um, Ancestral Path Tarot by Julia Suchia, Suchia Watts. Um, I love these giant cards uh, and these are actually really, oh I love these actually. Every time I look at them I'm like oh they're so pretty. They're really really beautifully painted um, or, or designed. I don't know what they were done in. This, what's neat about this deck is that the Major Arcana um, covers like a wider realm. It's more like um, archetype based, right? And has multiple cultures, but through the minor arcana in the swords, you really actually get um, an entire um, story and mythology through the wands, through the sacred circles, which are the pentacles, and through the cups. 
um, and I actually tracked down a used copy of the original full-size guidebook which is for some reason out of print you only get this little pamphlet here which doesn't give you as much information frankly um, but the larger book I purchased after I've worked with this deck for a week and that has the full length like stories and myths about it um, so I'm going to work with this for a week with that fuller book before I make a decision but this one is staying in my collection for now for sure oh I don't think I showed the card backs um, that is what the card backs look like a really really beautiful deck and that brings us to more specific stories and things. So I have, I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly. This is my Harry Potter tarot. This deck was actually created by um, Eleanor P Piper, 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 I don't know how to pronounce her name. Um, it is an artist um, collect, an art collection deck essentially. It is a full 78 tarot deck, but it isn't available um, easily to purchase. You do need to contact the artist directly. I think I did that through her Deviant Art account and um, ordered this from her as fan art. And it's really, really well done. It does have some heavy thought influences. There's some wonderful astrology through this deck, but it's the only Harry Potter deck I've seen that is straight up Harry Potter and I just adore it. So this is staying for sure. It's just a special thing in my collection and I couldn't see parting with it. So that's staying. I don't think I'm getting rid of a lot in this, this section, guys. And then of course is my beloved Game of Thrones tarot. Uh, yeah, this is special. The current printings of this deck don't have this same amazing cardstock. Um, I don't know if it's as good, but the original cardstock that you got with this deck is linen finish, like so it's a plain cardstock. It's really, really good. Like it's the most, it's just the most satisfying shuffle ever. Um, I love this deck. I have a, a very, very special place in my heart for this deck. I would not part with this deck. <laughs> for starters, it was one of the things that originally brought me and Danny and Dustin together. We ended up forming the Three Fat Readers collab channel. Our first video was about the Game of Thrones and we talked about it with our Game of Thrones tarot. Um, so it's got a place in my heart for that. But also I just know these characters and these stories really well. So it's a very useful deck. Um, it reads really well. And I love the little guidebook, this little hardbound guidebook that comes with it. I wish the text was not so tiny but it works great and it's a nice size so I can keep the cards and the deck together. So that's not going anywhere. Oh boy. Next up is one of my most beloved decks and this is the Alice Tarot by Baba Studio. This is the second edition. Um, I freaking love this deck. Beautiful box, obviously. Gorgeous cardstock. Look at that metallic gold on the back. Um, this deck is amazing and the full length guidebook that you can purchase separately for this deck I think I don't know if this is back out of print again it may be Bob Studios decks tend to come back and then sell out but the full length guidebook even has a full the full story of Alice in Wonderland and Through the Look Looking Glass um, it's an abridged version with little thumbnails of all of the images from the tarot deck so that you can see exactly where they fit into the Alice in Wonderland stories this is just a stunning deck, and the cold foil stamping on this deck is spectacular. It just brings it to life in a way that is really hard to describe. If you don't have a Baba Studios deck with this particular style of artwork, it is well worth having. Some people gush over the Victorian Romantic Tarot, which has a lot of similar kind of artwork and similar features with the cold stamping. I gush over this one. This is my favorite of one of my favorite Baba Studios decks, I should say. There's two that are right at the very top there. So this one is definitely staying. Next up is the Practical Magic Inner Witch Oracle, which is inspired by the movie Practical Magic. I had a lot of fun playing with this deck. I got it in a trade, um, and there is, um, at the time I'm filming this, he's actually currently funding his, uh, this is by Grounded by the Moon, currently funding the second edition, which I think is going to have a less glossy cardstock, if I remember right, and a few extra bonus cards. This is a really fun deck, particularly if you um, are a fan of that film. There's a lot of like Midnight Margaritas. There's a lot of really fun references to the movie, and in general it works great as like sort of an all-purpose witchy oracle deck. 
That said, I don't see myself reaching for this a lot in the future. As much as I enjoyed my time with it, and I think it's a really cool, well thought out deck, um, I just find that I tend to reach for or be more interested in reaching for decks that have a lot more cards in them. This one feels a little skimpy. Um, it works. It works great. Um, but I just don't think it's one that I'm going to continuously reach for. So I think I am going to consider this one for trade as well. Um, and that brings me to, and I don't like tuck boxes. Okay. That brings me to my favorite story deck. Oh, my last unicorn tarot. This was such a journey, um, this deck to come to life, but it was well worth the wait for it. Um, it's a spectacular deck. The guidebook is spectacular. This was put on, uh, done by Geekify, um, and you can still order it, but I, the box, I believe, is all, everything that I got in the Kickstarter is all separate now, I believe. So I think you can still purchase the box. I could be wrong, but it would be a separate charge. These cards would come in a, I believe, um, a clamshell box or a tuck box, I'm not sure, and I don't know if the guidebook is this, like, faux leather with the ribbon bookmark um, in the non-Kickstarter version. I don't know. The deck itself, I don't know if there's any changes, but it is so beautifully done. It's a matte gold gilding, rose petal finish with these gold details and gold on every card. I know this story frontward, frontward and backward. Frontward is not a word, guys. Forward and backwards. Um, and so there's a lot for me to read into these cards. This is definitely one of my most treasured possessions. I love this deck so much, and the art is spot on from the movie. Even when it's not depicting a scene from the movie, movie you can see where that that scene might have gone in the movie. Does that make any sense? Um, it's like here. Obviously, we don't see four cups circling King Haggard, but it just, it totally works if you know King Haggard as a character. Um, very well thought out. You can tell that people who were real fans of this movie... Um, and the stories by Peter S. Beagle created this deck, so it's stunning. I would not part with it. Okay, let's see if I can wrap this up before we hit that 30-minute mark and my camera shuts off on me. So I'll put that away separately, but that's definitely staying. So the decks for consideration for rehoming. The Mythic Tarot. Baba Studios Fairy Tale Tarot, I think... I think I am going to put that in my pile to consider trading. Practical Magic can go. The Glastonbury Tarot, I think, also is going to go. Um, this one, I think I'm going to wait just a little while longer, the um, the Mythic Tarot. I think I want to wait and see if a reprint comes out. Um, but then why am I waiting if I'm not going to work with it in the meantime? I think I am going to pass this along. If anybody is interested, it is a, a much more well-worn copy. Um, but I think I am going to pass it along. So that means I would be passing along Glastonbury, the Mythic, the out of print Baba Studios Fairy Tale Tarot and the Practical Magic Inner Witch Oracle, the first edition. So these are the decks that I'm going to be decluttering slash rehoming. Um, just as a refresher, I don't do this super hasty. I like to set them aside and think about them for a while before I actually um, release them out into the wild or put them up for trade. So at the time you're filming this, I may not quite be at the point where I'm ready to actually let them go, but they're definitely going in my probably to be rehomed pile. So thank you so, so much for watching this installment of my 2020 deck collection and declutter series. I really appreciate you being here and taking part. This is super fun to do. Make sure that you like this video, share, subscribe, comment below if you have thoughts on any of the decks that I've shown. And as always, remember that if you would like to book a reading with me, you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thanks so much. Bye.